I'm literally gonna be walking around with my camera like this. Okay, so we just got home from doing some shopping and I just wanted to show the things that I got. I got this really cute Christmas sweater. I don't know why, but I just ended up getting two Christmas sweaters. And um, it's October. This is the other sweater I got. Look at how cute this is. Isn't that just the cutest thing? And I'm so excited. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. <laughs> We also went to this really cute coffee shop called The Mellow and we took these cute pictures. It's me and my cousin Ika and Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Guess where I am? I'm back home. The trip to San Francisco was so fun. It was too short. I was only there for a couple of days, but it was really fun. I am done with this painting. It's done. That's so exciting because now I get to start another one. I did work this morning and I woke up at 4.30 in the morning for work, so I'm feeling really tired, but I'm so excited to paint again because it's been like three or four days which is so long. Let's get started. Now I'm going to Kansas. I'm going to see a lot of my family. I'm actually going for a funeral. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to head to the airport and fly to Kansas. Denver Airport. We won't be recording at the funeral for obvious reasons, so I will see you after. We just got back to the Airbnb. Wait, where are you looking? Are you looking at the viewfinder or the camera? I don't know. We have to look at the same place. <laughs> I don't want to be in. 
Just look at the camera. We just got back to the Airbnb. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Now, we're not at the funeral anymore. And that's what's going on. So, bye. <laughs> It's a little bit chilly outside. I think it's like 50 degrees right now, but it's nice and it's peaceful and everyone else is asleep. So I think I'm just gonna sit out here and draw. This has been a really weird and emotional trip. I've only been here for a day now, but it's been really weird. It's been like beautiful to spend time with my family and the funeral service was beautiful but it's also just been really weird and emotional i've been running on very little sleep i'm still having a good time i'm hanging in there and i am trying to do as much art as i can because that always makes me feel better so. right now i'm going to read to you the eulogy that I read at my grandma's funeral. I've really struggled to figure out what it is I want to say. The problem is that my grandma was so important to me and such an incredible and beautiful person that it feels impossible to find the right words or stories that even begin to do her justice. But I'll do my best. My grandma Peggy had this incredible warmth to her, a warmth that could envelope everyone lucky enough to know her. She was also incredibly talented. She was the best pianist I have ever known. I swear, her fingertips were magic. When my grandma played piano, the world would quiet down and listen to her. Nothing existed except her and the piano. She was so passionate about music, and while first and foremost, I was her granddaughter, I was also lucky enough to be her piano student. I was fortunate enough to take piano lessons with her once a week, on and off throughout my childhood. Even when I was out of state, she would make copies of all of my piano music so we both had it, and then she would FaceTime me and try to teach me. Our lessons were always a priority. As her piano student, I got to witness a side of her that was both patient and passionate. She didn't just teach me how to play the piano, she instilled in me a love for music that I carry with me to this day. Those lessons were about more than just following the sheet music, they were about the magic of creating something beautiful together the shared laughter when I made a mistake, and the patience she had for me as she guided me through each piece. Even when I was a grumpy teenager who didn't try hard enough to learn or appreciate our lessons as much as I now wish that I had, she never failed to believe in me and inspire me to keep practicing. Her passion and love never wavered. She never let anything get in the way of our lessons. But it wasn't just her musical talents that made her remarkable. It was her ability to make everyone around her feel at home with her, and to feel cherished, valued, and loved. Her warmth wasn't limited to our piano lessons, it extended to every part of her life. She had a way of making each moment special. Whether it was a home-cooked meal waiting for you when you got home, sitting and watching late night shows together, or the way she said, I love you. Every day with her somehow felt like a holiday or special occasion. Grandma Peggy was not only my piano teacher, but also my life teacher. She lived her life as an example for us all, demonstrating that the most precious things in life are the relationships we cultivate, the memories we create, and the love we share. By welcoming exchange students into her home, 
her ability to bring so many people together by throwing the most beautiful parties, and she just happened to be the best host of all time, the way she cherished her piano students, her unwavering commitment to the church, and so much more. Through these actions, she taught me the importance of kindness, generosity, and unwavering love. While I hope this speech offers a glimpse of the kind of woman my grandma was, it's important to know that she was so much more. There aren't enough words and there isn't enough time to fully express to you just how extraordinary she was. Her memory will always be a source of comfort and strength for me, and I will never listen to or play piano without feeling her presence with me. Okay, I'm back home. Um, I'm so tired. I slept until 10 a.m. today, which is noon in Kansas time. It's just been a long few weeks. I'm really happy to be back home. I'm gonna do some painting. I really want to finish this painting that I'm currently doing of like the subway station. So that's pretty much my main goal for today is just to finish that painting. Okay, I'll check in later. All right, so I'm still working on this painting. Um, it's, it's getting there, you can see. I'm getting really sick of it because it's just a lot of work like having to use all of this tape in it because there's just so many straight lines it's just taking a really long time but it's fine it's almost done <laughs> and I, I'm having fun it's just like a little bit annoying Well, I think it's done. The only thing that's not done is right here. There's like a little sign and I'm gonna use like, I think a micron pen to write on the sign because I don't have any brushes fine enough. But besides that, I think it's probably done. The part of it that I'm most proud of is the sky. The clouds. It's my first time painting clouds and I followed a Bob Ross tutorial. So thanks Bob Ross. It's all thanks to my friend Artie for the reference picture. I will include it right here. Um, I think I'm probably gonna go ahead and end the video. It's been a whirlwind. We went to San Francisco together. We went to Kansas together. We painted an entire painting together. So thank you for coming on these little journeys with me. It's been a blast. If you enjoyed the video and you want to come on more journeys and adventures with me, because I just go on so many, um, then subscribe. And if you want to be my friend, then comment, because I think we're all friends here, and I like comments. And like the video if you liked the video. <laughs> okay, cool, sick, have a good day. Bye.